Hey everybody. So, um, I'm in my car right now. This is a pretty, a pretty funny story. Um, I went in my car. I was on my way down the mountain to go to the beach because I wanted to do a love reading. I wanted to do a collective love reading. Um, and I got this vision, this inspiration earlier t today, this morning, to go down to the beach and do a collective love reading down there. So, I did everything I needed to do this morning, got morning coffee done, however late that was, but like whatever. Um, I got morning coffee done, I did the rest of my stuff that I needed to do today, and then I packed my stuff up, I got myself together, and I started heading down the mountain to go to the beach. Um, now, I find myself in this position right now for no other reason, or for no reason other than I procrastinated on something, and now it's come due, I guess, and it's going to cost me more to fix it than it would have had I just handled it before. And that is knowing that I needed to change a tire because it kept deflating on me and I kept having to fill it back up, but it was never such a thing. You know what I mean? Like it, I, it was so infrequent that I had to fill it back up that I constantly forgot that I needed to change it until, you know, that moment when I'm at home and not going out or anything like that. You know what I mean? Like, and so on my way down the mountain today to go to the beach, I about, about two kilometers into the ride, about half, maybe a little less than halfway down the mountain, I realized that I had forgotten a set of cards that I like to use for love readings. And at first I said to myself, no, I don't really want to go back up there for it. But then I said to myself, well, Eric, you're not very far from home. I mean, yes, you have to go back up the mountain, but you're not very far from home. It's not like you got all the way down to town and you remembered this, like you got all the way down the mountain. So like, cut your losses. You might as well, you're better off going back up now, now that you've remembered than not right? It's going to be much easier, take less time and much less gas if you just go back up now instead of trying to go back up later or something like that. I mean, I could have not gone back up at all, but in hindsight, that was probably the best option, but like whatever. So I went back up and here's the thing. Before I left the house the first time, well, while I was leaving the house the first time, I was on my way down, I kept hearing, feeling I've got to do something about this tire. And even before I left, that's right, before I left, I was like, I've got to do something. I've got to remember to do something about that tire. So I remember that I forgot this thing, this deck of cards. And the whole time I'm thinking to myself, remember, keep in mind, I'm thinking to myself, do something about this tire, Eric. So I'm like, all right, let me go back up now. I go back up now. I go back home. I get what I need to get get back in the car, drive back, I'm going down the mountain again, and all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm feeling like the tire's flat. And sure enough, it's flat. But hey, that's okay. I've got a spare tire, and I've got a tire and iron, but I don't have a jack. So I'm stuck here for right now. Um waiting for a friend of mine that I was planning on meeting up with later on anyway, which was another reason why I was going down the mountain. So I'm just going to wait for her. She's going to be back around soon. So in the meantime, I'll do this reading. However, it's not going to be from... <laughs> it's not going to be from the beach like I had originally intended. But we're still doing it. And I'm being guided to start with the Romance Angels. Um, and this is exactly what I went back up the mountain for. I thought I was going to be starting with the, um, the, the black deck, the, this deck, the, uh, this one, this love deck here. I don't, I don't even remember it. See, this is how disconnected from this I am or I've become. I mean, I don't even remember the name of that deck. The love oracle. There it goes. There it is. The love oracle deck. Uh... I haven't done a love reading in a long time, you guys. 
And I knew I needed to do this for the collective, right? Because this is part of what I offer on Patreon here. So I got to do that, right? But I haven't felt with it. And I didn't feel with it until this morning when I was like, I just want to do a collective love reading, a collective love message. I don't want to split it up by sign. I like the idea of doing the sign readings, the monthly sign readings. I'm really liking those, even though they're draining for me. They're, they're pretty draining. They take a lot of out of me, but it's a good way for me to connect with the collective on an individualized, individualized basis other than all of the collective readings I do, right? Okay. So I like that, but doing it for Patreon, it's too much. It's too much. So I just want to do a collective love message here and I want I don't know how frequently I'm going to do this I just heard infrequently but I don't know I was thinking maybe doing this on a weekly basis or maybe just doing this as it's needed okay well here's our message so maybe just doing it as it's needed since everything came out as soon as I said that oh, okay all right so what do we have here Give your relationship a chance. Codependency. Reconciliation. Let your friends help you, which I'm wanting already. I'm wanting to say always intends your angels, your guides, and all that stuff. I wouldn't necessarily recommend allowing other people to get involved with your love life at this point and spirit and maybe it's your guides that are saying it to me right now that are they're just like yeah i wouldn't we wouldn't recommend this either let us help you let spirit help you let your real friends help you and i'm not trying to say that you y'all got y'all all y'all friends are not your friends i'm saying when it comes to what serves your highest good in life your best allies are your higher self and your spirit team okay because they are on the other side working on your behalf taking care of or handling things you cannot see, we cannot see, we cannot perceive of. In all honesty, you guys, our greatest allies are our spiritual allies at this point in the game, okay? Our spiritual allies or what, what allows us to get connected with our spiritual allies will connect us naturally with the right people in the physical world, okay? Keep that in mind. So start as anything, as any real connection, really, start it from internally and let it work its way out externally, right? Excellent. Let your friends help you. Spirit is... Uh-oh. No. No. Okay. Because the next question, the next thing was pay attention to the red flags, right? And that felt right. And let your friends help you. This feels right here. But all this stuff, give your relationship a chance, codependency and reconciliation. I feel like this is the problem here. Because I was just about to say, I feel like you should let your spirit guides, spirit is trying to get you to reconcile with someone that had you had a codependent relationship with. And I stopped myself and was like, wait a second. That doesn't feel right. Why would I say that? I think, and then you have pay attention to the red flags here at the bottom of the deck. I think these are the red flags here. I think this might be something that someone is saying to someone else. Reconciliation. Give your relationship, but I'm hearing give our relationship a chance. But I feel like I, okay, so this is either what something is something someone is saying to you, or this is something you are saying to yourself, or maybe this is, for some of you, maybe this is some sort of spiritual manipulation that's trying to happen here. And, and it's interesting that this is coming out this way because I have started to notice and started to question what I was hearing. Who... Whose guidance was I receiving while I was in the heat of the twin flame journey, the twin flame situation? Now, don't get me wrong. Like, I have all the respect, respect for spirit, okay? But lately, I've been in an energy of questioning spirit, questioning authority, 
questioning higher perspectives, higher principles. Now, mainly I'm questioning it so that I can have a better understanding of what it means for me, how it resonates for me. But I kind of want to ask you guys or somebody here to question the messages you're receiving. Question who they're coming from. What sources, which guides... Because there is codependency here. And I feel like someone is trying to get you to reconcile. Maybe even someone may be trying to get you to let your friends help you. Maybe you've got some friends here that are like, come on, like, listen to me here. Like, I'm really concerned about you guys. Like, this is a really great relationship. I couldn't stand. I couldn't bear to see you guys break up. Question their motives. Question their motives. Why do they, what, what vested interest do they have in this relationship, in this cycle, actually in this drama? What vested interest do they have in this drama? 11-11. We are going to, I'm going to, see, I had all kinds of equipment and shit, man. I brought the fucking tripod and I was going to set us up on the beach. We were going to have a cute little session. And spirit ha said, nope, flat tire instead. Okay. Well, shit, here we are. Anyway, I want to get some tarot into this, into this one, into this shit right chill. There are some changes that are going to be coming to Patreon, you guys. I'm really, I don't want to say that spirit. Yeah, it's not quite accurate. I'm challenged. I'm very challenged with Patreon right now. Challenged by Patreon. It's a good thing. Challenged in a good way. <laughs> okay. Um challenged in a good way though. So I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out how to work it, how to do it, how how it fits well for me. All right. So there are some uh, keep in mind. First of all, I want to say thank you to those of you that have been staying sticking with me here and like are still with me and and all that on Patreon like y'all rock. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. But I'm it's it's shifting, all right? Uh, how I work with Patreon, I'm I'm trying to figure out how I do it instead of how modeling after what everyone else thinks or how everyone else has done it. Like, I'm trying to blaze my own trail here, and that's going to take some time. So thank you for being here. We have some some cards out already. And straight up and down, you guys, y'all need to walk away. from. Somebody needs to walk away from this shit, man. Because, first of all, this is reminding me of my codependent relationship with my ex-husband, of whom I left right before months, about six months before I started my channel, okay, before I started reading for people professionally. Um, and that was a codependent relationship, okay? And it, what I'm feeling about this situation is that it is just continuously, continually perpetuating this drama, okay? What just came out, what wanted to fly out while I was shuffling is the Five of Swords, the Five of Pentacles, right? And the Eight of Cups. Five of Pentacles is perpetuated over and over and over again. And what's telling me that is the Five of Swords. And what's tell what, it's, what this is telling me is that somebody is in this type of relationship because of some sort of self-gratification that they get. But think about it. Think about it and feel, feel through what kind of, what type of self-gratification you would need to get to perpetuate this five of pentacles, woe is me energy. This codependency. No, that you damn right. That's some five of swords shit. The type of energy that you would need to, you would need to receive out of a, out of a connection, out of a relationship, to get gratification from something like this. That is definitely some five of swords shit. If I have ever heard any, right? That's literally stabbing yourself, hanging yourself on a sword, martyrdom for the thrill of it for the validation of it, not even martyrdom, 
Do you know what I mean? That's literally what I'm seeing with this Five of Swords energy. Somebody is literally hanging themselves on a sword. And that is keeping another person around out of pity. Five of Pentacles. That person needs to just walk away from this shit. Eight of Cups. Because yes, it is a lose-lose situation. Nobody wins here. Nobody wins here. Five of Swords. Nobody wins here. Okay? Eight of Swords, though. What else, Spirit? Yeah, the Eight of Swords is just at the bottom of the deck. What else, guys? What else is going on in this relationship, this situation ship, whatever? What else? I can tell you what, this let your friends help you shit is suspicious, is sus. Is sus as fuck. I'm not gonna lie, you guys, it's sus as fuck. Like, I don't, I don't trust, I don't trust y'all. Straight up and down, I don't trust y'all. Look, 555 five, five on the counter, I don't trust y'all. Yeah, see? We've got the Queen of Wands, which is you, in this situation, needing to walk away from this shit, right? But you're coming out as the Queen of Wands because you are being provoked into figuring out what it is you want to be in alignment with. Because I feel like you're finally coming to an understanding that whatever it is you are in alignment with is what you attract. You're starting to understand the lesson of... When you, res with the, the vibe that you hold is that that you attract, that which you attract in life. You're starting to get that. So now you're being put in a position to question what it is you want to be in alignment with. Queen of Wands, Two of Wands, okay? Some of you are sitting here looking at this, talking about the Queen of Wands is the, the other woman, that there's some other woman. I don't give a flying fuck about that. I know why that's happening. Why I'm why I know why I'm picking up on that because I'm re this is for some people in the twin flame journey, on the twin flame journey. And there are some readers out there that are very popular that see the Queen of Wands and that is their other woman card to them. Okay. I'm not passing any shade or anything like that. Okay. Okay. That, that that's why I'm picking up on that. All right. Fuck that. Okay. I don't care if there's another woman or another man. I don't care if there's somebody else. Quite frankly, even if this is your boyfriend or girlfriend. But it damn sure is that way if it's your if it's just your twin flame and y'all ain't even together. Okay? Let me just say that right here, right now. All right. But um even if it's your boyfriend or girlfriend and they've got someone else on the side, y'all, you are better off. If you don't want to deal with this shit no more, you are better off not even worrying about that and not even considering it any of your business or any of your problem because all you got to work on is what you actually want to be in alignment with and hold that alignment, Queen of Wands, and let the universe do the rest for you. Meaning, hold the vibration of what it is you want in your life, feel it from within, and allow the energy around you to shape your reality to reflect what it is you feel inside how it is you feel inside okay it's a manifestation trick but listen here you've got the ten of cups now too this i'm hearing this is the opposite end of the spectrum of the situation and this is the energy that's making me feel like somebody here has people in their ear in support of this relationship. And that's what's causing me to ask you to question their motives. What is their vested interest in this relationship? Ten of Cups. Because the Ten of Cups can represent not only your ultimate wish fulfillment, but also the ultimate wish fulfillment of others. Meaning the Ten of Cups can also represent a community aspect or a community point of view or a communally held wish that is desired to be fulfilled okay sorry the sun is shining on it the, the ten of cups right but what i heard for you in this situation is that this is the opposite side of the spectrum so what's going on here with this ten of cups with this community and i literally feel like this is a group of people that are that have 
that it feels like they have some sort of vested interest in your relationship and they're trying to keep it together while you might be witnessing it falling apart. And they're trying to influence you, maybe even guilt you into working it out when you see very clearly that it's falling apart. Right? What do we have here? Yes, see? Exactly, exactly. Oh my God, you guys. Oh my God, you guys. You have the two of swords at the bottom of the deck. This is absolute denial. And I'm also hearing obsession. There is some sort of power or some sort of benefit that these people that are involved in this, that are trying to get you to stay with this relationship, there's something they get from it. And they're obsessed with this. I don't know what it is. It literally could be anything, but there's something that they get for this. And they are from this, excuse me, from this relationship, from you two being together somehow, and they are obsessed with keeping it together, keeping it intact. This also may be a deeper family drama as well. Like the obsession may not necessarily be with the individuals. It may be an obsession with having some sort of status or benefit within the family, within the community, something like that, okay? But there is an obsession with some sort of benefit, I'll say that way. And this relationship is involved somehow. So that would be why, that is their vested interest here, okay? Take that as it resonates for you, but keep in mind we have the, the, the we have straight up bold face, yo, bold face, bold face denial, guys. <laughs> Two of swords, okay? with none other than the Page of Cups. Oh, see, just try and work it out. Extend your heart to them. They're a really good guy, or they're a really great girl, or they've been so good to you, and, and or you've been, I've never seen you so much better than when you were with this person. Like, but, but you see, they don't see the work that you did to get to that better place. It could very well be this is where the denial aspect comes in. It could very well be that, yes, this relationship was great and really got you to a brand new place in life. But not because this person was so great for you. It's because this person finally kicked you in the ass, taught you a lesson to get you to better yourself. You pulled yourself out of that one because of the nature of this relationship. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a good thing you know what I mean like overall it was good because it taught you something right uh, and it doesn't actually to be quite honest with you it doesn't even really have to be bad either okay it's the nature of the, the true nature of the relationship of the dynamic between you and this person that these outside sources don't see king of swords in reverse and in some cases, you guys, they are absolutely refusing to see it. Okay? I'm going to leave it there. I hope that was helpful for you guys. I love you all so much. I'll speak with you soon. Bye.